Hey everyone and welcome, it's Smarty Pants Chess and today I'm going to go through a computer game for you. This was played between Alpha Zero and Stockfish in 2018. And we've gone through a lot of these 2018 matches already, but this is another interesting game. So in this game, Alpha Zero is playing with the white pieces and Stockfish 8 is playing with the black pieces. And I just want to note that I don't want to go into too much detail in this game because, I, frankly, I don't think I could input anything better than what Alpha Zero and Stockfish played. But I'll just go with a few ideas that I saw in the game. So Alpha Zero played d4, Stockfish played knight to f6, and Alpha Zero is very flexible with his knight to f3. Stockfish played e6, and Alpha Zero played c4. Stockfish played b6, going to Fianchetto the bishop on b7. Alpha Zero does the same, going to Fianchetto their bishop. Bishop b7 is played, knight c3, bishop b7, bishop g2, and both sides castle. And here Stockfish now played knight e4. So preparing to get the knight into the centre, going to maybe play a d5 move or an f5 move to support this knight. Um, and I don't think Alpha Zero is going to take this knight off. White continued with bishop d2. If black takes this, this is an option. It's actually one of the main lines. White can play queen takes d2, uh, and usually d6 is played, followed by e4, knight to d7, and rook a d1. And typically here, human players have played rook e8, and rook f e1, followed by e5. So this is another main line variation, but actually white is considered better by Stockfish here. So the computers actually evaluate this as plus one for white. I think this is due to the space advantage for white in the center with all these free pawns on the c4, d4 and e4 square. So rather than take this bishop off, Stockfish played d5 instead. Alpha zero took this pawn, c takes d5, e takes d5 and queen to b3. So I got this pawn with the queen and the knight and alpha zero connects their two rooks together as well on the back rank. Stockfish plays knight to a6, rook fd1 is played, Stockfish plays c5, trying to undermine white's centre. If alpha zero takes his pawn off with d takes c5, I think black will recapture the knight. And once the queen retreats to c2, bishop f6 should be played, and then white can play bishop e1. And if black plays rook c8, we're actually into a dead equal position, with some weaknesses for both sides. So white's c5 is quite weak because the rook's line at the queen. However, this d pawn is incredibly weak as well because the rook is also on it for white. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting position if both sides went in for this. In the game though, Alpha Zero played Bishop F4 rather than take the pawn. So rerouting the bishop, this is now a much better square for it. Um, and now this rook is also unleashed against the queen. But Stockfish boldly blocks the position with C4, attacking Alpha Zero's queen. So they retreat it back and Stockfish attacks again with Knight to B4. Now I'm pretty sure I've seen this in a lot of games actually where Stockfish has blocked the center and the queen is forced back but then suddenly alpha zero springs to life very soon because his pieces are very well placed so it's not exactly like white's got a bad position but anyway queen c1 is played and stockfish plays a weird move i think f6 i think it looks weird but they probably think it looks great i guess the point is that it stops the bishop and the knight from infiltrating on e5 and g5 and do you know what i think maybe stockfish should have just kept it on that square because pushing it up later it leads to a lot of trouble for Stockfish. Now in the game, Alpha Zero played knight to d2, but uh, so my engine gave a3 as the best move, um, but weirdly Alpha Zero didn't play this. The point is after knight takes c3, queen takes c3, knight c6, um, the engines believe that e4 is really good, but maybe Alpha Zero saw that it wasn't. For instance, if we go into this variation with d takes e4, white can play queen takes c4 check, king h8, and then d5, and all of a sudden white is winning, after knight to e5, they're just queen takes e4. White wins a pawn, has a passed pawn. If we were to go back to this position, I don't think Stockfish would ever take this pawn on e4. Instead, they'd probably play knight to a5, which is given as the best move. If white goes e5, then there's knight to b3, attacking the rook, which goes to b1. Black can play b5, and it gets a bit messy for white. After rook e1, queen b6, takes, takes, and bishop e5. This is actually given as dead equal now for both sides. So maybe alpha zero saw this, and in long, the long term strategy, in this position, a3 isn't necessarily the best move. So instead, alpha zero plonk the uh, knight back to d2 instead, which I think is a good move because it attacks the knight twice with two knights and also with this bishop on g2. 
and it forces AlphaZero to play a concession, which ultimately leads to Black's downfall, I believe. They played f5. So, of course, it protects the knight, but it also weakens this important e5 square later in the game, as you'll see. Now, I think taking this knight would be suicide for white. Takes, d takes, and then they could play d5. Uh, this was given as the best move, but then takes, 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 and queen c3. So, white's given up a pawn for some um, dynamic piece play. Is it worth it? After bishop f6, bishop e5, and queen to d7, I don't think it is. Takes, takes, rook d4. Queen b5 and e3. Who's better here? It's given us slightly better for black due to the fact that white's a pawn down. Black's got total domination over the white squares, but their bishop's locked out in a weird position. But white has control over the dark squares. And to be honest, I think this is a drawn end game if both sides play correctly. So let's go back to the game. Instead of playing taking the knight, alpha zero played knight to f1, rerouting the knight. Stockfish played rook c8, and alpha zero plays knight to e3, which finally has rerouted the knight to a decent square. Queen d7 was played, and bishop e5 by alpha zero. I'm sure I've seen this again in multiple videos already by alpha zero. They've unleashed their bishop on e5 square, and now it's going to be outside the pawn chain because next move they're going to play f4, supporting the bishop. So the point is the bishop is outside the pawn chain, and if black ever tries to take this bishop off, white will have a passed pawn. For instance, let's say bishop f6, I thought this looked like a decent move. I think alpha zero can play f3. And if knight takes c3, b takes c3, knight to a6, they can play f4. And that bishop is just an absolute monster. If black ever takes this off, I think they can play d takes e5 actually. And again, three pieces attacking this pawn. White's also got a pass pawn. Uh, a very nice position for white to be in. So in the game after bishop e5, Stockfish played knight to a6. And alpha zero fold in with f3, attacking the knight, which takes on c3. White recaptures, and there was knight c7. So it looks like black's also rerouting the knight to a good square. But alpha zero finishes off their plan with f4. And again, we've got this great bishop. And again, if bishop f6, I think white can play a4. And if takes, takes, again, we've got this nice position where white's got past e pawn. Three pieces attacking this d5 pawn. And I've also put a few arrows on this knight because they could play knight to c2 and knight to d4 in some cases. Again, a great position for white to be in. So alpha zero is playing this in a very Carpovian style. Stockfish played knight to e8 in the game. Alpha zero played a4, trying to shut down some counterplay play on the queen side. And Stockfish plays knight to f6. So okay, Stockfish is getting their knight into e4. Uh, is this really good for black? I'm not so sure. Alpha zero played rook to f1, rerouting the rook. Uh, and if knight to e4 here, I think white will just take it off. After e f takes e4, I think alpha zero can actually pawn storm here with g4. If bishop f6, the tactics work in white's favour with bishop takes, rook takes, and g5, attacking the rook. If rook g6, white can play h4. And I was thinking this looks quite dangerous for white, but if queen h3, they're just in time with f5, attacking the rook. If the rook retreats, they're just in time here with knight to g2. A great move. Protecting the weakest pawn. And soon, I guess, queen f4 will follow. And white's got a superior position. Stockfish can't play knight to e4 yet. So instead of playing knight to e4, Stockfish played rook f7. Alpha 0 slowly improved their position with bishop to f3, giving their bishop more scope. Rook cf8 was played, and now h3, stopping any knights to g4 ideas, preparing g4 for alpha 0, just manoeuvring for a pawn storm. Stockfish did play knight to e4 now, and alpha 0 took it off, and f takes e4. Alpha 0 played g4. The bishop on e5 protects his pawn very nicely, and all of a sudden, white's got a pawn storm coming, attacking black. In the game, Stockfish played bishop c6. I was looking at bishop d6, so maybe black should try and take this bishop on e5 off. But um, I looked into it, and f5 is a great move for white here. Because if bishop takes bishop, pawn takes, and queen c7, attacking the pawn, white can just play e6, attacking the rook, and even if queen g3, again there's knight g2, and this pawn is still attacking the rook, so the rook has to move, and again white's in time with queen to e3. So attacking the queen and protecting every single weak pawn. And white's got a tremendous position. Even if queen takes queen here and knight takes, uh, white's got a tremendous position. I think they can do this knight c2 to knight to d4 manoeuvre as well. Um, 
Yeah, I think we'd all agree that we prefer to play white in this game. So anyway, Stockfish played bishop c6, hitting the a4 pawn, and now we see alpha zero's brilliance. Um, they just sacked this pawn, queen e1, ignoring black's threat. Because after bishop takes a4, my evaluation of all the engines says that black is winning now, but um, after queen g3, suddenly they start shifting in white's favour. The point is now that there's nothing really black can do. White's going to unleash a pawn storm against black, and to be honest, there's not enough counterplay for black on the queen side. They try though with a5, but after h4, what's uh, black going to do? I think black's just flailing around. I looked at bishop c6 in this position, but even so, f5 is coming. If black defends with h6, white can calmly play king to g2, and if a4, white can play rook f4, building more pieces into the attack. If bishop f6, suddenly the evaluation swings after rook a f1. All the en engines now like white. I think it's because if bishop takes e5 in this position, then just d takes e5 and e6 is coming. And even here, if uh, let's say b5, white's got g5, bishop takes, d takes, and then queen a7 and just f6. And white's got a tremendous attack coming. They've got threats such as g takes h6, and this queen is pinning this g-pawn against the king. Again, in this position, I also looked at rook e8, but again, g5 is just too strong. Bishop takes bishop, d takes e5, rook takes e5. But white has an ace up their sleeve with g takes h6. And even if king h8, f6. If black takes this pawn, rook takes, rook takes. And finally, white has queen takes e5, pinning the rook. And they're going to play knight to g4 next move. I'll just simply pick up the rook because it's pinned. So instead of bishop c6, Stockfish went for the counterplay with, with b5. But alpha zero just plays f5 and carries on with their attack. g5 is coming, h5 and f6. Stockfish tries to defend with h6. g5 is definitely possible here for white. If h takes g, there's h takes g, rook takes f5, and knight takes f5. So black can sack an exchange. Rook takes, rook takes, and queen takes. But after g6, still white is winning. But after queen g5 takes takes, white is winning, but this is going to take longer for alpha zero to win the game. So black sacked the exchange and still has um, two pawns outside, trying to queen. So for this reason, after h6 was played, alpha zero didn't play g5 immediately, just played rook f2, trying to avoid this exchange sacrifice. Stockfish played queen to d8, attacking h4. Alpha zero now plays g5, stopping any bishop takes h4 ideas h takes g5 was played and alpha zero came up with the best move which was queen's g4 if white takes this pawn off with takes uh, i think white's still winning after bishop takes g5 they can play rook to g2 but black can take this knight off and if queen takes e3 queen e7 at the end they still have queen h6 um, but it's not as strong as what alpha zero played in the game queen g4 is a much stronger move the point is if g takes h4 White can play rook to g2. If bishop f6, uh, just queen h5. If bishop takes bishop, the pawn will recapture it. Um, and black is pretty much stranded because f6 is coming at any moment. For instance, let's say queen b6. There's queen g5, and now f6 is prepared. Bishop b3, and finally f6. Um, and again, what is black to do here? Because f takes g7 is coming. If rook to b7, then king h2. And White's going to put their last rook into the game, into the attack. Uh, this should be game over. I mean, even knight to um, f5 is coming at some point. So after queen g4, I also looked at bishop b3 for stockfish. Again, rook g2 is really strong for alpha 0. If b4 is h takes g5, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. Um, so sacrificing material, but after b takes c3, again, White's still winning after knight g4. Knight h6 can come in. After c2, Stockfish can try and scare alpha 0, but king g2 is too strong. If rook b7, again we've got this f6 move. Um, there's nothing black can do. Knight h6, and the g-pawn is pinned, and they're going to win this exchange on f7. So after this fabulous queen g4 move was played, Stockfish actually just gave up, played b4. So alpha 0 is free to take this bishop on a4, rook takes a4 and b takes c3 so it says a lot about the position when stockfish just gives up a whole bishop 
Alpha 0 continued with rook to a1. Black played c2. H takes g5 was played. Bishop takes g5, hitting the knight. And Alpha 0 just takes the pawn on c2. Stockfish played e3. Um, and White just calmly plays rook to f3. And now two pieces are hitting this e3 pawn. Uh, this is looking rubbish for black, to be honest. Bishop h6 defends the g7 pawn. But um, Alpha 0 just crashes in again with this key move, f6. There's nothing to be done for black here. They pretty much have to sacrifice um, the exchange to stop any f takes g7 ideas. For instance, if queen b6, f takes g7, bishop takes g7, white will play rook g3. If queen b7 to support uh, the bishop, there's a nice move now which is queen e6, pinning the rook on f7, and white's threatening to play rook takes g7. If king h8 to get off the pin, rook h3 just wins. After king g8, there's bishop takes g7 now. The king is forced to take it. Um, and it's two move checkmate, queen h6, king g8, and queen h8 is checkmate. So going back to this game after f6, Stockfish sacrificed an exchange. Rook takes f6, bishop takes, rook takes. And alpha 0 played rook a, f1. And here Stockfish resigned the game, and alpha 0 wins. So why did Stockfish resign? Well, after rook a, f1, even if rook takes rook here, white can just recapture this rook. Um, and there's nothing really that um, black can do. They're a whole piece down. Knight takes e3 is probably going to come next. Uh, where's black to go? Let's say queen e8, for instance. I think white can just can continue with queen f5 ideas and try and pick up this loose pawn. And it should be quite easy for alpha zero to win this end game. But anyway, that was a very interesting game by alpha zero and stockfish. Ultimately, I think it was around here where Stockfish started to go wrong. They played f6. The knight went to d2. The point is now three pieces attacking this knight, and f5 was forced. And this just leaves this e5 square wide open. And all of a sudden, um, Alpha Zero is just dominating the board. I hope you enjoyed my analysis of this game. If you haven't already, please do drop a like, comment, or subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Or comment in the comment section below if you think I've missed anything, or if you found a great variation that I missed. Anyway. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.